why should we use it at all? Why should we use visual aids? Well, the, there are several different answers. First of all, it can somehow enrich your classes. It can, it can spice them up. It can add some visual content and make it more attractive. What types of learners are they suitable for? Well, you might be familiar with this basic theory that we uh, differentiate or divide learners into three categories, sometimes even more. The first one being visual learners, the second auditory, and then kinesthetic. Uh, you probably know what it means. Visual learners, they, they find it easiest to, to learn things when they look at them. So they perceive information and process uh, visually. The second category, auditory, they need to hear things and to speak things. And the third one, they need to, the kinesthetic learners, they need to have things in their hands and somehow touch them, grab them, use them, manipulate them. All right, the good news is that none of us is, or like most of us are not clear cut. We're not one category only. So we are usually a combination. And uh, another good piece of news is that most of us are actually towards the visual part. Even when you think about it, uh, how you process information, how you every day, how you deal with information. So you check your smartphones, you, you use uh, uh, your laptops, you use your computers, you read newspapers. So you mostly look at things visually and you perceive information visually. So first of all, pictures, videos, cartoons, and miming. So I'm sure you're familiar with the usage of pictures. All course books are usually full of them. Some of them are good, some of them are worse. Even when you go into companies, you see pictures on the walls of companies. You can, you can also find something like a company newspapers. It's great to grab those and to use them in your classroom and in your classes because uh, I mean, this is something the students can relate to, and you have it at your hand, so at your disposal, you can actually easily use that. How we can actually use pictures in our classroom? Well, the easiest would be something that is commonly uh, tested in, in these certificate exams environments. You know, like uh, they show you a picture and they ask you, can you describe that? Then they also ask you to compare and contrast, which is also typical. So these are the skills you can help students to develop and you can be working with that really easily just by presenting the photograph. You can divide students into, into groups or pairs and student eight Student A might be looking at the photograph, and student B might not be able to see that. And then, then actually ask some questions, or the other student describes it, and in the end, uh, uh, he's shown the picture, and uh, a surprise look uh, just appears on his face because it's something completely different than he, than he visualized. All right, uh, now we're getting to videos. Well, you can, you can download uh, some videos from the internet. What is especially good are some viral videos because uh, they are shot in a way that makes them attractive and fun. You can use some, some comedy sketches. It's best if the videos are short enough. I mean, like, I'd say two to three minutes because otherwise it just takes too much of the time and students easily get lost in that. Either you can prepare some and pre-teach some vocabulary, prepare some questions at the beginning, or you can actually confront the students with the questions at the end of the video. What I quite often do is I play the video once, ask them some, sp some questions some about the gist, some general questions, and then I replay that again. But what I tend to do is uh, to use, uh, I don't know, well, you might have different, different players. I use my laptop and uh, a BS player. And it's good because it's, uh, you can control it with arrow keys and you can easily go back or go forward. And you can stop it at any time. So anytime the students just don't catch it, are not, not able to, uh, to kind of uh, receive the information, they, you can just rewind it and, and play it again. You can say, especially for cartoon strips, uh, many of what I have said about videos is also applicable. So you can speak about some story, you can practice narrative tenses, um, you can ask some general questions that I mentioned with pictures, like what is there, why is it there, and so like why did he say that, or what's... You can also uh, forward it somehow, project it into future. So you say, what do you think is going to happen next, right? 
So there are really quite many questions, quite many options for you to uh, to like for to be used with uh, with cartoons. Okay, miming. I'm not sure how much you actually use that in your classes and uh, in companies. I have uh, in my practice found out that uh, uh, students in companies are usually not so willing to get up from their chairs, right? They, they are kind of glued there. And uh, so I, what I consider to be still successful is if I make them, them move their upper part of their bodies <laughs> and, and if they show some facial expressions. So you see it's especially like at some uh, more lower levels, perhaps B1 or so, or even A2, you can be teaching uh, some uh, personality or rather like feeling adjectives. So you can you can encourage them to to check like what the facial expressions are. The benefit of this is that it relaxes students. I mean, they might be reluctant to do that, but once you really get them into doing that, the atmosphere uh, changes rapidly and everybody kind of melts, right? I'm sure you are also using them in your classes. <coughs> Uh, what's, what are they good for? Well, sometimes when you want to, when you want students to understand the, the system of tenses, especially uh, how the events happened, uh, what the sequence was, so you want to to show it graphically. You want to show that with some some visual aids. Uh, you can draw it yourself, and the good thing is uh, to draw some some marks that are commonly accepted or people generally know them. So for instance, of course you need to, uh, to draw some cross as like where the event happened. You need to indicate where now is, where past and, and, uh, and where the future is. But there are some other things that might be helpful. For example, you might be using a wave for indication of uh, some continuation of a tense. Uh, or you can you can use some kind of vector and arrow for the time duration, right? Whiteboards are, are typically well. Sometimes it's uh, if a classroom is smaller, it's just a flip chart. They share many qualities, and uh, you see, uh, well, the difference is flip chart is usually smaller. It stays there permanently, and so on. Whereas whiteboards, uh, you can erase things and recycle in a different way. A good thing about uh, whiteboard is to to have on your mind that uh, it's good to structure information. So, for example, what I do, if this were my my whiteboard, and no worries, I'm not going to write on it, is uh, well, I, I make the left part uh, a sector for new vocab, write it down, new vocabulary items. Uh, towards right, I write some phrases that might be either new or people just make mistakes, are not so familiar with them. Then towards the right, I tend to write uh, the issues, so some problematic areas or uh, perhaps uh, even pronunciation. Yeah, It's good to have some pronunciation window. I usually write a small uh, capital P with a colon and I just add the the pronunciation. I've got here some, you can use leaflets. Leaflets with maps, you can ask students about their activities. You can ask them about the trips they've made, where they went. I actually even use mappy.cz. I ask students like, okay, and you started, where did you start, and what time did you leave, and then you went where, and so on. So I make it really interactive, and I use whatever there is or whatever the, the computer allows me to do. I haven't mentioned flashcards or generally cards, but I'm sure you're familiar with them eh, for like uh, uh, the building, for building a vocabulary stock and, and so on. Preparedness. Well, uh, don't just depend on things to be there, to be on the spot. So for example, make sure you always carry with you flip chart or, or whiteboard markers with different colors. Yeah? Uh, means like having, like preparing things in advance, uh, finding the right uh, right video and uh, uh, video that is appropriate to the level, that is attractive and so on. And it also relates to my next point, which is up-to-datedness. Uh, you all may have seen things like course books, old course books. People generally laugh at them because when they see the photographs in them or even some 
uh, some drawings in there, they, they see they are not relevant. And that's not attractive, that's not fun. People just laugh at it and they don't want to work with it. So unless your photographs are focused on something that is historical, that is somehow, that the purpose is really that it should be old, try to, to find photographs that are really uh, like up to date or photographs or any other materials. So use the things, as many things that are somehow related to the, to the outside world as you can and, uh, and that are related to what you're teaching so that uh, you don't use things for the sake of things but you really fit it in there is uh, playing dumb. I'm not sure how often you use it. I think it's something quite natural. When watching a video, when, when looking at a photograph, just pretend. I mean, it's fun, it's a game. You don't need to pretend for real, but just uh, in the communication, in conversation, pretend you don't know that thing. You, you didn't understand that. You ask for clarification. Finally, fun factor. Whenever you use any visual aids, remember that uh, students are generally terrified of course books and of this formal setting of, of, of uh, language instruction. They are afraid it, it will be just the drills and just questions and answers and, and some course books and some tedious materials. So if you can intersperse it with things that are really, they, they raise their interest, their, uh, their enthuse them, it will definitely help your classes and also help their, their learning. Now, 